Hi, I'm Ray. Welcome to this episode of how to code a convolutional neural network from scratch in Java. Um, if you have not been following along with the previous videos in the series, I highly recommend you do. Um, as always, there is code linked on my GitHub in the description of this video. I assume future me will have done that. Um, as well as a list of recommended readings before you attempt this tutorial. Sweet, and with that, uh, I'll let my past self get into it. All right, so I have gone ahead and created a empty um, command line project in IntelliJ. Um, I'm using IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, but you could use whatever IDEA you want. Shouldn't really matter. Let's, in, in here, let's create a new directory. Just call this the data directory. And this is gonna be where we put our MNIST data set. Um, now I'm gonna be using the CSV um, version for this tutorial. Um, you totally don't have to make a data reader from scratch, but because um, I just wanna show the whole process from scratch. You totally don't need to do this. There are MNIST data readers libraries pre-built. Now what we want is a class that we can use to associate the data of one number, one image, um, with a label of that number. So we have the CSV binary data that represents the number eight, and then we have a label that says, yes, this image contains the number eight. So let's go ahead and create a new package. We're gonna call this our data package, and we're gonna create a new Java class, and we're gonna call this image. So, Image is just going to have one um, one double array, two dimensional array containing the data, and one int label. And we'll just go ahead and create the constructor, generate the constructor, thank you, and with both of those. Awesome, and we also will generate some getters and setters. Oh, uh, just getters actually, because we don't really want to change this label once we create it. Um, cool, getters for both of those. Awesome, and I guess I may as well make these private. Cool. So there is our image class. Now, how do we get the data out of these CSV files into our image? So to do that, we're going to create a new Java class called um, data reader. And what this is going to do is turn our CSV data into that double array that we want, into an image. Um, so we want to keep track of our image size. And this is not going to change for the MNIST database. Um, yeah, it's always 28 by 28 pixels. Cool. Now, we want to create a method that is going to return a list of our image. And it's going to be, yeah, we'll just import that and we'll call this method read data. And it's going to take um, a file path as an input. So in our case, we would do um, slash data slash MNIST train, or slash data slash MNIST test, for example. Um, so let's create our empty list of images. Go with the array list. And now, in a try-catch statement, we are going to try read these files. So we're going to create a new buffered reader, data reader, and it's going to take a new file reader at our path as input. What's our problem here? Ah, oh, it's because we need the catch. So we've got our data reader, what are we going to do with that? Well, we are going to first get the next line. So, string, line. Um, cool. And while this line 
um, still has data in it, so while there's still a next line. While that does not equal null. I see. And close this in brackets. So while this doesn't equal null, so while we are still getting data, um, let's split up that line. So if you look in the CSV file, everything is comma separated. So we want to set up, uh, split this first line that we get by all the commas, and then those are going to be our numbers, our data values. We're going to get a string array because we're going to split on all those commas. Um, and our regex is just going to be on the comma. Awesome. And then we are going to get all of these um, line items into integer form, or into double form, because at the moment they're strings. And that data dimension is going to be the 28 by 28. Okay, so now um, we want to get our label. And what is our label? Well, it is the first number in all of these lines, so at um, index 0. So this is telling us that this line here, if we turned it into a 28 by 28 um, picture, would represent the handwritten number 7. So let's do our int label equals integer dot integer dot pass int because um, we're converting from a string to a integer. Um, we're going to get the first of our numbers in our line. Um, cool, so there's our label. And then from int i equals 1, because we've done um, 0, we are going to go for each row. And then for each column. We are going to set our data, so our double data value, at position row and column as, sorry, casting, casting to a double, integer dot pass int, and then our line items at um, i. And then we're going to increment i. Sweet, so this is going to go along and populate our double with whatever the next um, number in this line is, because th this line is not divided into 28 by 28, that is one long line, each one representing a number. Um, so yeah, that's why we are updating this, and then anyway, once we have finished all of that, we can add our image to our images table. So images.add new image and it's going to have our data and our label. And then we can just um, return images. Cool, so that's our data reader um, class all done and dusted. So let's see, in this main function here, Let's create a new list of images. Um, a new list of images. This new data reader dot read data. And our path is going to be data slash MNIST test. And then let's um I guess print the data from one of these images, so that could be fun. So maybe on this image class, um, let's have a function for printing it. All right, so I have whipped up a little two-string function. Um, now let's go check that out in the main. All right, so remember to check your file name, um, and let's run this. 
fingers crossed. Awesome. Let's take a look. So this is a seven. And you can kind of see, if you look at these numbers that are non-zero, the faint kind of shape of that seven. So awesome, we're getting our data. Um, and in the next video, I will show you how to build the layer class.